As a superhero flick, it's shockingly joyless and over the long with the two iconic crime fighters presented as angry, cranky, easily manipulated men in tights. Oh, the good one. To be fooled into believing what we see on screen is part of a cinematic experience, and Snyder has failed to fool us. And it comes in Spanish. A beautiful shell with nothing inside. Also, this review comes in Spanish. Basically a long, tedious, and angry teaser for what DC has in store for the future, and by the looks of it, it will be dark, gritty, and poorly acted. And finally, it does also come in Spanish. One thing all four of those reviews have in common is all four of those guys or girls, whoever the hell wrote them, has no clue what they're talking about. And sadly, like I said, that is on Rotten Tomatoes. Batman v Superman was not perfect. I'm not here to say it was perfect. I'm not even here to defend the film. Because yeah, I get it. It wasn't great in, in its entirety. I think everyone wanted more out of it. But this movie is not bad. It's not even close to bad. It's actually good. Not great, good. And I'm very pleased that I saw it where I saw it, when I saw it, and I would go and see it again. And I think you would want to see it again. Two. So, let's talk about it. Hey guys, it's Ryder here, and with finally my review of Batman v Superman. So, just a quick reason as to why I didn't review this film last week when it came out. I've been on vacation, I've been busy. When I go on vacation, I don't bring my, my laptop, I don't bring my equipment, so I, you know, just didn't get my review up until now. But, finally, here I am, um, and I had a great time watching Batman v Superman. Like, it, as you saw, like, I read you those reviews. I, I Those are just, like, four. The t like, those are the first four reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. That's not good. It has, like, a 29% on Rotten Tomatoes. Batman v Superman seemed to be a disappointment for a lot of people. But if you fell in the category of me, or where I fell, I really enjoyed the movie for what it was. And I think part of the reason so many people didn't love the movie so much is because they didn't quite understand it. And uh, I think that'd be my biggest complaint about Batman v Superman. It was so intricate that you really had to really dig deep and think and kind of connect the dots from here to there. And have even, I really believe you needed to have some history of the comics. Or at least know what might happen. Like, especially with the Flash cameo. Because it's like, well, how do you, if you don't know that he's going to be there. And he, you just see some guy in a, you know, with like a mask on. Who's coming out of a, he's coming right out of like a, what is it, like a window or something. And... And he's telling, you know, Bruce Wayne, find Lois, do this. And, I mean, people were confused. Also, I think a lot of people were maybe surprised with the ending. Just minor spoilers here, right now. I mean, there will be spoilers throughout this whole review, but right here especially. Okay. Superman dies? I mean, I know a lot of people were like, what the hell? You know? Superman doesn't die. Um, you know, they really combined a lot of storylines here. I think that's kind of what made it so hard to understand. You had, like, Death of Superman with Doomsday. You had the Dark Knight Returns. You had Wonder Woman coming in. You had, like, Man of Steel 2, as people like to call it, with Lex Luthor. And then you had, like, your Batman kind of introduction. And it was just a lot going on. Um, for me, you know, I I knew what was gonna was supposed to happen. I knew that I was going to enjoy the parts with the Flash and Aquaman and all that the Justice League set up. And I did appreciate that. I did. Um, but I do admit that it was a little bit challenging, I personally think, for them to kind of introduce so much. Uh, and I, I, I don't know. I think they did a good job for what they could have done with the Justice League set up. Um, I, I, I just think it was hard for the audience to understand it, and I think that's kind of why it, it's getting such low and more negative reviews. Kind of moving on to the tone of the movie, I thought the tone was perfect. I, I get my fun, kind of spunky, kind of have, having a darker side, but mainly just kind of that fun comic booky vibe from Marvel movies. That's what I get from that, and I love that feeling. I love that kind of, oh yes, you know, Iron Man and Cap and Spider-Man and Hulk and yeah. Here in DC, 
we get more, they tried to make it more realistic. I mean, as realistic as possible. I mean, you got an Amazonian, and then you got a, a Kryptonian, and then, I mean, it's hard to kind of keep it realistic, but it has a darker tone that makes you feel like, hey, maybe, maybe superheroes could live and exist in that world. Like, maybe that would work. And I like that a lot as, and I like that a lot as well. So, um, you know, just from there, you know, I think the best parts of the movie were Batman, of course, Bruce Wayne. I know a lot of people are saying that. I love Ben Affleck as Batman, really. You know, I, I was actually just re-watching some of the uh, Michael Keaton, uh, Tim Burton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney. I've been kind of re-watching some of those. I don't really want to re-watch the Batman and Robin, George Clooney. That one sucked ass, you know. We don't need to relive that. But uh, I think that... You know, compared to some of these other actors who played Bruce Wayne, um, you know, I, I think it's a tough call to say who's a better Batman, Christian Bale or you know, Ben Affleck. And I really, I'm leaning a bit more towards Ben Affleck. I love Christian Bale as Batman in, in the Dark Knight trilogy. That it, those are my fav those are like my favorite three movies. Some of my favorite three movies ever. Love those. But. You know, I just think there's something to this new Batman which I want to learn more about. And I think a lot of people want to learn more about. I think they did a nice setup. Um, and I, I I don't know. I like the way the intro kind of started. I like the first, be the beginning of the movie. It was all more centered about Bruce Wayne. And I think maybe that's where they downfalled. You know, they were trying to juggle too. Like I was saying, they're trying to juggle too much. They want to introduce Batman. They want to make him big. Maybe they should have done a solo Batman movie first before this. And maybe that would have been better for the audience. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I, I think that it's just they tried to maybe merge too many stories. And I think that's where everything kind of got lost. Uh, at least in my, my kind of perspective and my vision. Uh, as for the story, well, I think the story was actually pretty interesting. It all kind of revolved around Kryptonite. Uh, and Lex Luthor kind of getting his hands on Kryptonite. Uh, and then Batman or Bruce Wayne kind of saying, okay, Kryptonite's the only way to kill this guy. Let's do that. I really like the motivations for Batman. Like, you saw it build up. Like, you know, Z the, uh, Superman and Zod, they, they knocked down all of Metropolis, and his building and his friends all died, and you saw that. You felt that emotion for him. And then you, you also felt the, a good reason for him to be pissed off. Like, you were almost pissed off with him. That was what was fun about that. Motivations for Superman, they weren't there. They, they, they tried to be there, but they weren't. Like, they, they start, I thought they were going to do something cool where it's like, Superman's pissed off at Batman because Batman's killing people now. He's branding people with the bat symbol, and that was going to be the whole big deal. No! Oh, hi, I'm Lex Luthor. Did you guys know I've got long hair now? And I kidnapped Superman's mom, and I'm going to force him to do whatever I say because I have his mom. Oh, oh, that's a good, that's a good idea. Did you guys, that, that, that's a good idea. It just, uh, that was sar all sarcasm, but it, it's like... I was expecting something more out of that. Like, the whole battle. Like, you put that V in there. It's it's Batman, V, and then Superman. I get it. There's no S there. It means it's not a full-on versus movie. But it is... There's that V there. And that means that they should be fighting for a good portion of the movie. And they fought for, like, I don't know, 15 minutes? And hey, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the shit out of that. But I really was hoping for them to just go in it a bit more. Uh, and, and kind of just show me that they've got the guts to do something that we're never really... I, I don't know. I just... I think this was the opportunity to show, like, the battle of a lifetime. And they showed it, but not in its full entirety. That's, that's kind of where I'm coming from with that. As we move into Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman was probably one of my favorite parts of the whole film. Gal Gadot, I don't care what the hell you guys want to say about her. Oh, she can't act, or, you know, she's she's bored, she's bland, she's, you know, sandpaper, all this bullshit. Not a chance. Not a chance. May yeah, maybe she didn't have the opportunities to kind of show more emotion with her lines. I didn't give a shit about any of that. She came in there and she kicked ass, even when she wasn't wearing her all her whole Wonder Woman getup. It was so much fun to see that, because I, I've never really been that excited with the Wonder Woman character. And, you know, maybe maybe some people will, will write in the comments, oh, you know, you're, 
you're anti-feminist, you don't like Wonder Woman, all that. It's never been that I disliked the character, I just never cared about the character. She just was like, oh, okay, that's cool, she, she's cool, That I like that. I like her in the Justice League, but she was never, like, so significant for me where I'm like, oh, it's Wonder Woman! Oh my god, Gal Gadot changed that. That's, that's how significant her performance in this film was. Like, it got me so excited for what's to come for the Wonder Woman movie. Not just that picture we got with her and Steve Trevor and from a hundred years ago or whatever. I'm talking about when she is when she when she's fighting Doomsday and she's she picks up her sword and she's like ah and then she she like flies like what yeah it was that it was it was so fun to see that happen. I loved her chemistry with Batman. We didn't see too much chemistry with Superman really because well she only met him at the end and then was she like oh is she with you oh no I thought she was with you okay so. Then, then we, then she kind of is introduced in that way, but you know we don't get to spend that much time with her and Superman because, well, Superman's killed by Doomsday. Uh, you know, it, it was, it was fine. The Doomsday fight, I'm not gonna lie, it was epic. It was one of the best superhero fights I think I've ever seen on screen. It was amazing. Okay, but it, it was, it just the, the whole Doomsday element, it was ruined for me with the trailers. The whole surprise Wonder Woman thing was ruined for me in the trailers, and I think that. That was a big downfall, you know? I knew what to expect. I, I knew from the beginning who's... I was like, who? So I was trying to figure it out. If Zod was going to actually become Doomsday like we heard in the rumors, or if it was going to be that Walter Keefe guy because he didn't have legs, maybe he'd be mutated somehow with to have legs again. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I think that it just... It was too much. I already knew what was going to end. I knew the end goal. I didn't know Superman was going to die. They had some balls to do that. Uh... But, yeah. And, of course, Superman's not really dead. You guys saw the, the gravel move at the end, and, hey, it, it is what it is. Superman, he never really died. He never, he was killed in the comics, he came back to life. So, everyone knew that, but I was really hoping they were going to leave it at the fact that Superman died, and they'd have to maybe work around that in Justice League. Like, maybe if someone's trying to revive Superman, Superman revives, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even want to talk about Justice League yet. That's a whole other video, but there, there's a, there was just... I didn't know. I didn't know what they were trying to do there. Because they, they kill him off and then they, they just show the gravel move and they're like, oh no, he's, he's still alive. Well, everyone knew Superman never really dies, but it just would would have been interesting to kind of see them go in that dark direction. Like, in, the, in Captain America the Winter Soldier, if they would have killed Captain America, holy crap, you know, Marvel never had the balls to do that. DC would have beat Marvel there. I don't want to compare them to Marvel. I don't even want to make it as a race, but... Everyone else does. Everyone else wants to make it as a race, right? And I just think that if DC wants to innovate and be different, they should have maybe made it that Superman really died. Um, oh, everyone knew he'd come, be coming back, but I had a bit of a problem with that. Then the other problem I had maybe with Batman, the only problem is that he was so intent on killing people. Um, and it was a small problem because I, I didn't like it, but then I kind of realized why Batman was doing this. He was being this way because he'd been being Batman for 20 years, and I get that. And I want to understand how he got there. And that's kind of where I feel like a Batman solo film would have been nice to see before this movie. Um, and we're, we know we're going to see it after, but just goddamn make this thing already. I want to see a solo Batman film directed, written by Ben Affleck so bad. And uh, I, I really hope it comes soon. Uh, overall, this movie, I, I don't know what, what you want me to say about it, because I... I said it. I, I think it's a good movie because I, I did have a good time watching it. I, you know, the editing choppy at times, you know, because you're, I think there was one scene where it's Lex Luthor talking to uh, Sen the Holly Hunter character, the senator, and they're having a conversation and then it just cuts to Batman doing something else. Like, actually, like, I think he's driving the Batmobile. I'm like, what the hell is that? That's not good editing. It's like kind of a peaceful scene, kind of chopped right off, and then <laughs> Batman just shooting. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that needs a transition in there. Uh, if you want, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my thoughts on Lex Luthor. Jesse Eisenberg is Lex Luthor. I appreciated the effort they were trying to do. I appreciated what they were trying to do with this version of Lex Luthor. Did I like it? Mm, it was okay. I didn't hate it as much as some of the other people. Uh, I don't think he was a great villain. I think he's a fun character, and I think that... If they decide to maybe use him in a better way in the future, he could be interesting. He had a bit of a freakish kind of 
he, he tried to be this kind of weird creep guy, which I think pulled off, but at the same time, I think he had a creepy element to him. One thing that got me worried, I believe it was like three or four months ago, Jesse Eisenberg, he was talking at a press conference or something like that, and he was saying, I'm not trying to be the Lex Luthor from the comics, I'm trying to be, be the character that's written for me. I'm trying to create the character that's written on the script. And that's what kind of worried me, because that led me to believe this Lex Luthor, who is a very fun character, is not going to be there. He's not going to be there. He's this new version. So hopefully if they decide to use him again, they use him in the better way. Uh, I don't know if they ever will, though, because he created Doomsday. There's nothing more he can really do that's big. Uh, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Like I said, the Justice League things, I really had a good time watching them. The, the Justice League cameos, the Flash cameos, all, all of that. I love that. Uh, I, I just think it was kind of, it wasn't shoehorned in there. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't shoehorned in there. Uh, but I do think it just created some confusion for the rest of the audience. And I think it could have used some more setup, maybe either in Man of Steel or even just more throughout the whole movie. Uh, I like the way this ended, though, aside from the whole Superman coming back to life, dead thing. I like the way Batman and Wonder Woman are like, okay, look, well, we're, we're going to be, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll find these other metahumans now. Uh, the whole thing with Darkseid, we already saw it coming. The ping, ping, ping. And I, I like that Lex Luthor knows about it. I'm excited for uh, Darkseid to come. You're probably wondering why I didn't talk more about Darkseid in this review. It's because I have maybe 11 other videos that are coming out like this very second. Um, and I did a, I'm doing a whole Flash nightmare breakdown, so you guys uh, get that. Very much fun. I had a great time watching this movie. It wasn't, you know, I wouldn't say it's the best superhero movie that's ever going to be made. I'm not going to say it's the best superhero movie that's ever been made. Um, but it did its job. I, that's what I'll say. It did its job. It made a ton of money. It's going to continue to make a ton of money. And I cannot wait for Wonder Woman and Justice League. So let me know in the comment section your thoughts on the movie. I'm going to give it like a 7, 7.5 out of 10. Uh, I had a good time watching it, but like I said, it, it did have its downfalls. So let me know what you guys thought, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll be back with a bunch of other great Batman v Superman DC Extended Universe videos coming very, 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 very soon. I'm Ryder, starting off with Toys with Attitude, and... Uh...